Welcome to this World Sociology screencast on modernization theory. And let's begin with a broad overview of this perspective. And I think in a nutshell, modernization theory argues that development is a process of poorer countries becoming more like us. In other words, this is a perspective that believes in the Western capitalist model of development as a template, as a model for developing countries. And in terms of looking at the barriers to development, the focus of this perspective is on the things that are wrong with poor countries, on the internal barriers, both economic and also some of the cultural barriers to development that you find inside poorer countries. And then the final thing, in terms of our overview of modernization theory, is this belief that overseas development assistance, or international aid, is an extremely important part of helping poorer countries to develop. And the most important name to remember for the exam when you're discussing this perspective is this American scholar, Walt Rostow. And Walt Rostow's version of modernization theory suggested that development should be viewed as an evolutionary process in which poorer countries progress up a development ladder of five different stages. And this five-stage model of development follows the pattern of development that the developed capitalist countries had allegedly experienced between the late 18th and 20th centuries. So let's take a look very briefly at Rostow's five stages of development. So the first stage, the uh, least developed stage, is the traditional society. And at this stage of development, production is largely based around subsistence agriculture. Uh, technology is very basic. Uh, people are based in small communities with jobs that are passed on uh, through the family line. And for countries to move to this second stage, the key thing that needs to occur are technological innovations represented by this tractor. And these technological innovations should allow producers to become more efficient, to generate surpluses, which can then be sold for profit. So you begin to get a bit of trade in this second stage of development. For countries to progress to the third stage of development, Rostow argued that you needed the emergence of entrepreneurs willing to reinvest their profits into new forms of technology and new forms of infrastructure. And for Rostow, the critical level of reinvestment is 10% of gross domestic product. And when that occurs, then you really begin to see the economies of poorer countries begin to take off. And it's during this stage that we begin to see a process of industrialization uh, marked by a growth of manufacturing. And the growing industrialization of the economy generates a range of new social and logistical needs, uh, such as educated workers, represented by this cartoon. And this means that there's a need for the role of the state to expand and investment in new forms of infrastructure, uh, including state education and state health care, for example. And then finally, as countries progress to the highest stage of development on Rostow's evolutionary ladder, stage five, more and more wealth begins to trickle down to the population as a whole as workers' wages improve. And this fuels demand for uh, consumer goods and services that go beyond those which meet their basic needs. And that's why this highest stage of development, Rostow called the age of mass consumption. Now, modernization theorists argue that underdevelopment and global inequalities occur because poorer countries often lack the key ingredients that they need to move from one stage to the next. So, as we can see on this slide, therefore the key practical challenge for this perspective is to identify those barriers which prevent poorer countries from developing and then coming up with suggestions, practical interventions, which allow them to overcome those barriers. So, for example, in traditional societies, there are certain aspects of their uh, economy that prevent poorer countries from modernising and developing. So the fact that their economies are largely based around subsistence agriculture, uh, 
that there's the use of very basic technologies, this prevents trade and the types of surpluses that would be needed to uh, invest in new technology and to modernise the economy. And therefore, from the perspective of modernisation theory, what needs to happen are large injections of capital, large injections of money, often in the form of overseas development aid, uh, to help poorer countries to uh, break out of this cycle of poverty. And in addition to the economic barriers to development, modernisation theories such as Talcott Parsons argue that there are also aspects of the traditional culture that can also impede development. So according to Talcott Parsons, traditional cultures are backward-looking, there's a kind of fatalistic outlook on life, individual achievement is prevented by the emphasis on ascribed status and also collectivism. And from this perspective, the way to overcome these cultural barriers is again to use things like aid, to invest in things like education, to bring about uh, a change in people's cultural outlooks, uh, a more kind of modern way of looking at the world. So just a quick reminder again about the basic assumptions of modernisation theory. So they say that the West is best, that development means that poorer countries have got to follow the path to development already experienced by Western capitalist countries. To do that, they need to overcome their internal barriers to development, both economic and cultural. And, to and finally, to help poorer countries overcome these internal barriers, they need foreign assistance, they need uh, aid uh, to help them invest in the uh, technological advancements, to create the industrial infrastructure that is required to achieve economic takeoff. Now, as we shall see in a moment, modernisation theory is heavily criticised as a perspective. However, having said that, there are some strengths to this perspective. So modernisation theory, unlike some of the other theories, has very practical solutions to the problems of uh, underdevelopment and global inequalities. And um, a key public intellectual uh, called Geoffrey Sachs, I think, adopts a perspective that is very, very similar to Walt Rostow's perspective. So Geoffrey Sachs argues that the poorest countries in the world are trapped into a cycle of poverty and to help them to break out of that cycle, there needs to be a doubling in the amount of international aid going to poorer countries. And Geoffrey Sachs argues that uh, a lot of aid that has gone to poorer countries has actually been very successful in helping them to develop and overcome some of their barriers to development, particularly in the fields of, uh, of health. However, Neoliberal theorists such as Bill Easterly and Dambisa Moyo are much more critical of the modernisation theory prescription of overseas development aid and they would argue that in many cases aid actually makes the problems of poorer countries worse. So for example they would argue that it leads to poor governance, that it leads to more corruption for example. Dependency theory, I think, would also be critical of modernisation theory. And their main criticism would be the idea that modernisation theorists focus far too much on the internal barriers to development and don't really take into consideration some of the external factors that they would see as being much more significant. So dependency theory, for example, argues that underdevelopment is caused not by internal factors primarily, but by the fact that you've got a rich group of core nations, mainly in the north, who are able to exploit the raw materials, the cheap labour, and suck out the wealth of this bigger periphery group of poorer nations that are mainly in the global south. And I think the counter-industrial theorists would argue that the main problem with the modernisation theory is this idea that the West is best. So they would argue that the main flaw of modernisation theory is its ethnocentrism. So the criticism here is the idea that writers like Walt Rostow and Talcott Parsons romanticise Western capitalist industrial society, uh, implying that it has no problems, and at the same time 
they underestimate traditional societies, implying that their economies and cultures have no value. And I think we can link this criticism to the work of Buddhist economists such as Schumacher, who construct a very deep critique of Western development and consumerism, uh, arguing that this type of society does not necessarily lead to greater happiness and well-being. And furthermore, they would argue that the type of mass consumerism advocated by modernization theorists is simply not environmentally sustainable in the long term. And finally, in romanticising the West, maybe modernization theory uh, doesn't really emphasise the types of problems that do exist in Western capitalist nations. And what we've got on this slide uh, is a reference to an article that I read a few years ago, um, written by uh, an Indian academic who thought that she knew everything about poverty because of her experiences in India. And then she visited Glasgow, the poorest city in the UK, for the first time. And she thought that the poverty that she witnessed in Glasgow, uh, when you took into account uh, things like social exclusion, breakdown of community, uh, drug addiction, a sense of hopelessness and despair, she thought that that type of poverty was actually worse than the material poverty that she had experienced in rural India. And actually life expectancy for men in the poorest areas of Glasgow is actually significantly lower than the average life expectancy in India.